take the American people back to July 2017. I was being told by Director Zhang, who's a senior executive at CFC, that the $10 million was going to be funded in two tranches of $5 million and $5 million. Once again, the way they were approaching that is $5 million was a loan to the Biden family, and $5 million was their contribution to capitalize Sinohawk Holdings. That money didn't come in June. It didn't come in July. And I was in Europe traveling with friends and family, and I was frustrated uh, because um, culturally there's a tendency to, hey, it's coming, it's coming, and it wasn't coming. So I was very frustrated. But also in July 2017, something that happened is uh, over July 4th week, and while we were celebrating our Independence Day, uh, President Xi was in Moscow uh, meeting uh, Vladimir Putin um, on a, an official visit. And in that meeting and in that, you know, multiple days, uh, Director Zhang was in Moscow was participating in that. And Rosneft, or media in Russia, had leaked to the press that they were entertaining selling 14 percent of Rosneft, which is the state-owned, U.S.-sanctioned energy company of Russia, to CEFC. When I saw that leaked, you can imagine, once again, the clearance I held, the military background, sort of pushed away from the table like, whoa, uh, that's, this is stair-stepping things at a level that do I even want to be associated with or do I even want to be near? Shortly after that information got out, I was told that Director Zhang's visa was denied. He could no longer get back into the U.S. for meetings or to you know, bring his wife and his kids to go to school in New York and that it was denied multiple times. Jim Biden confirms that in text. James Gillier references it. Kevin uh, Dongwin Nguyen, who's the individual that's referenced in Senator Johnson's Senate report, he went by Kevin. His legal name is Dong, uh, Dongwin uh, Gong, sorry. And so I was sort of walking on eggshells, you know, what's going on? You're saying this money's gonna be funded. It hasn't come in yet. I'm sort of near the end of my rope here. And um, then in September, uh, easily validated, uh, it's officially announced that CFC is, um, is uh, buying 14% of Rosneft, once again, the uh, state-owned uh, energy company. And so at that point, I just sort of pushed away from the table. The money hadn't been funded into, into Sinohawk, and I was having daily discussions with James Gillier. You know, what's going on here? Um, you know, the Biden name, Russia, China... Uh, do you know? Do I don't want to be anywhere you know near this. I got to understand all the moving pieces, and so we went into the fall of 2017, very well documented, um, when Patrick Ho, who's an employee or an associate of CFC, landed in New York. He was de detained by the U.S. government and put in jail for corruption, apparently for leaving shoeboxes of cash to two African presidents. And it started this downhill spiral of CFC as a company. Remember, President Xi was traveling around the world under the one belt, one road. That was their political approach. And CFC was the capitalistic side of the Chinese government doing things that they could do on the capitalist side that the government couldn't get done. It's very well documented the work that CFC did in the Middle East, in Czechoslovakia, in Romania, Kazakhstan, uh, in Georgia, all over the world. When they announced that, um, that they were officially tendering for 14% of Rosneft, a deal valued at $9 billion, I sort of pushed away from the table like, okay, obviously that's taking priority over this discussion. Um, and... Uh, I just sort of, you know, was watching things play out once they detained Patrick Ho. I did reach out to Hunter Biden in October 2017, asking him, hey, listen, they haven't funded the $10 million. Have you done something that I'm not aware of? Have you gone around us? Have you started a parallel discussion with Chairman Yi that I should be conscious of? And in a, a variety of text messages that you've been provided, and I think the American people have been provided, he says, no, I didn't go around you, um, but oh, by the way, I'm acting as the personal attorney to Chairman Yi. Now imagine being in my shoes, looking at my phone, reading this text message from Hunter Biden. I just spent six months all out of pocket myself. Nobody was paying me. I was paying for my own travel, my own meals, my own cars, anything that was needed. And Hunter Biden is now telling me 
that he's meeting personally one-on-one -on -one with Chairman Yi in his $50 million penthouse in New York. And if he can't meet him, he's picking up the phone and calling him. But they only discuss things in person. You can imagine my anger and frustration there because then I'm like, oh, this has gotten slippery. You have gone around me. What's going on here? And oh, by the way, Hunter, you're acting as the personal attorney to Chairman Yi while they're tendering for 14% of the Russian state-owned energy company, a deal valued at $9 billion? What am I missing here? And he sort of just plays it off. And he said, I'm working on a bunch of other personal things and, um, and visas and stuff like that, but doesn't go into a lot of detail. I'd love for you to ask him that. I'd love the American people to ask what those other special things were. You've told your story in a very public way. What do you expect the consequences for you and your family will be? Um, so my focus right now is not the consequences on me. I'm actually trying to be selfless in this discussion. I think the consequences our country faces, that average American voter that's thinking about what presidential candidate they picked today or have picked over the prior two weeks or in the future all the way up to the election. I'm doing this for them, not for my family, not for any money. I'm doing this out of a patriotic duty to our country based on my military background and my grandfather's background. So other people can determine the facts and what matters and how they want to vote. But I had to go on record because they chose to sort of mar up my name. So I have a former SEAL team uh, uh, protecting my family. I'm not at home right now. And I'll travel the next four years if I have to. I had to do this. Are you worried? Uh, of course I'm worried. I've gotten death threats, uh, um, calls. Um, obviously, I sat with the FBI. They assured me I would more than uh, be protected uh, by them when and if and needed. But um, I think I'll slowly become irrelevant in this discussion because the facts are so powerful and so necessary that hopefully I'll just sort of go stage left and hopefully our government and the appropriate people, the Biden family, will go on record and uh, basically provide facts to the American people. Tony Bablinski, thank you for talking to us. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tucker, it. for having me.